All right. And every one of those times, I keep forgetting to do the subscribe part, but too bad. <laughs> Here, how about this? I'll actually say, please like, subscribe, and share. <laughs> it's on the screen. I expect people to read, not just listen. All right. So in this one, we're going to be talking about homebrewing, creating your own world. And it looks like in this one, we start with, uh, wait, that can't be right. One, two. What's that? It's Lord Mattias' turn. Uh, okay, yeah, it is. All right, for some reason, I thought it was your turn, Bear. I keep breaking no, lead in this damn pencil. Um, all right, Lord Mattias, how do you approach homebrewing content for your tabletop RPG? Um, well, what I said earlier is, um, so Rules is Written is about the rule set. Homebrew, or I'm sorry, um, uh, House Ruling is about the table, and Homebrew is about the GM. Um, I, I, I don't... I, not, I hope this isn't controversial, but I think game masters are well in their right, provided they understand the rules that they're, you know, playing with, are well in the right to, you know, create things uh, and have, you know, build worlds, uh, do whatever uh, to uh, present a particular experience to uh, their table. Because, you know, they're a player too. They're just taking on a particular role. And um, I've, I'm of the opinion the game master, uh, you know, has a rather unique role and um, has a really interesting role to play and can do quite a bit. So when you are going to homebrew, you got to ask yourself, I think fundamentally, what are you looking to present to the players? What kind of experience is the table going to, that you want to have? Um, you know, you brought up Dragonlance. That's a real subtle one. Right, because is um, it subtle? No paladins, but an entire three well, classes of Knights uh, of Salamnia. Well, yeah. well, I'm getting to that. I'm getting okay, that. Okay, like sorry, on its sorry. face, it just looks like a D and D uh, mm -hmm. campaign world. But yeah, there's no paladins. Instead, you got these cool knights of Salamnia, mm -hmm. which they're not like lawful good, but they're just certainly law, right? And so there's this really cool political dynamic that's in there. That's maybe, arguably, depending on where you are on the whole real world versus fantasy argument trope issue with uh, storytelling uh, might be more interesting than just the paladin, you know, being this lawful good mm -hmm. annoyance in your party. Um, Dragon. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, Dark Sun is the obvious one. Um, that's the one that really cute clued me in back in the day. I'm like, holy crap, there's, this is D and D, but it's a little different. Look See, that's funny because I thought it went too far. So I say I didn't. I think it it captured what it was trying to do, and they answered some serious questions, like what would happen if magic had this sort of like connection to the environment? What would happen if you had like this like uh, you know uh, environmental ca catastrophe? And and it wasn't just like from a storytelling perspective, right? What would happen? It was how do the mechanics work? And that to me is an interesting question. And I think that's where in game masters, that's where they get kind of excited because now they get to they're getting to play not just with the story but with like the mechanics and, and get to create something. Um, so you have to answer that question: like what what experience are you planning to bring to the table that you hope works? And you have to start there. And again, bringing in your knowledge and understanding of the rule set, I think is key there so you don't inadvertently break the game by creating something that is um incongruent with the fundamentals of the game going back to lamentations of the flame princess we did play rules as written when we started but i did provide them with something a uh, little a few years back uh tracy heckman got in a little bit of trouble because he shared a meme that said reject modernity embrace tradition well, i wrote a little <laughs> You remember that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it was pretty funny. <laughs> but I wrote a blog post about like how it, it's funny, but you know what? OSR guys, like we, we if we really want people, the, the new players to come to the OSR, we have to understand a few things. Players like builds, players like choice. And so when I set up my Lamentations game, again, you heard me say earlier, you heard me say earlier, Lamentations got the strict niche protection. Well, I came up with a background system that did not add too much to the game, did not overburden everything, but it allowed players to get a little bit of a bonus and allowed Joe Fighter to differentiate himself from Bob Fighter. Um, and I was I was like, hey, if you guys don't like it, we won't have to do it. But they loved it. They absolutely loved it. And it was like this minor thing that not only gave them some choice, added some interesting mechanics to my world, but also allowed my world to have an expression that was beyond just the um, implied setting of lamentations. I have a dark fantasy setting, you know, 
a unified church versus all the chaos cults kind of thing. Nothing too crazy, but I really wanted that feel. So you have like inquisitors and things like that. Um, but I didn't have to like create all these new character classes, just these little backgrounds was, was enough. So, um, so yeah, I think I answered your question. That's how I would do you, it. You did, you Un did. understand um, what it is that you want to do and make sure you understand how to do it with the rules. Okay. So you talked about that instance. I want to go back to your lizard man instance for just a moment. And you, you talk about you, your players kind of added to the game and you found a way of adding that to it. So based on what you're saying before about the, the, uh, the backgrounds and now about the lizard man, what inspires you when creating the original content or original mechanics for your game? Is it just your players or? Oh, uh, no, it's anything and everything. Um, like I'll, I'll like hear like this random, like I'll like listen to like epic music, you know, no, no uh, lyrics or anything. It's just like orchestral epic music while I'm like, you know, working on something and then some tune, right. will hit me and I'm like, Whoa, this is really awesome. And then like my mind will start to wander. Now, next thing I know, I have this awesome villain in my head or I have this nation idea or I have this story arc thing that I want to do. Um, sometimes I, I lift things from books. Like I just read, um, Paul Anderson's The High Crusade. I absolutely oh, love that great. story, yeah. and I've 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 uh, some this project I'm working on. I'm I'm using that as inspiration for a spe uh, an alien species. Um, you know, so I get inspiration from everywhere. And what was special about the Lizard Man example uh, was it it was my players. It was me responding to my players versus my my players responding to me. Um, and I think that's what we really want as game masters. We want the players, we want to be the ones going, whoa, I didn't, I didn't anticipate that. Okay. Okay. How does this change the story? How does this change the world? And, um, and I just like working with mechanics and I like homebrewing. I like coming up with worlds. So when I thought about the lizard man, I also thought about lamentation, strict niche protection. Well, I'm like, well, he's kind of a fighter, but not really. So, uh, but it's a monster. So I, I created a monster class. So as he got higher in levels, you just get the lizard man gets bigger and bigger and bigger and tougher and tougher and tougher. But it's not like he had, he only gets that plus one to attack because fighters fight. Uh, the monster just gets kind of bigger and tougher though. Okay. A little bit more complicated than that, but I, you see what I I'm saying? Like I tried to understand and make sure it, fits that niche protection idea behind lamentations so so i was going to yell at you about a comment that you made earlier but you just saved it with what you said right there which is you know, uh, you know the whole players players want more i don't care no setting trumps everything now if you can add the lizard man in while not trumping the setting i'm good with it but oh, yeah. if you're just doing it because the players came up with some weird neat meme or idea no sorry player but you're wrong setting first Game second, players third. That's what should be in the first edition D and D <laughs> TMG. Uh, but all right, Bear, on to you. Back to the, the original question, which is how do you approach homebrewing content for your table? What do you mean by content? Uh, if you want to, add, if you want to add in a race, if you want to completely change, oh, the perfect example. When we started off with Codex Albana, while well, that's technically something that you've created a long time ago, we were doing the Palladium game, so we weren't doing the Palladium world. So you use your homebrew world for this. So whether it's creating races, a world, whatever it is that you're adding or completely changing, uh, how do you approach it? Yeah, well, first of all, every time you guys say Lizard Man, all I hear in my head is state your first name, your last name, and your occupation. Uh, lizard Man, Lizard Man, and uh, Lizard Man. And if you get that reference, good for you. If you don't get that reference, too bad. Uh, secondly, uh, so like you said, setting trumps rules. Rules must fit the setting. The rules must work within the setting. The setting must take precedence. Therefore, the rules must be the right ones for the setting. Now, I did a 20-year hunt for the perfect fantasy system for my setting and then finally decided a hack job of various BRP mechanics fixes that and addresses my setting perfectly. Uh, I have now since continued that to make Final Age, which is my BRP version, for specifically my setting, which is post-apocalyptic horror fantasy. Um, so, yeah, uh, anything I design, I'm not going to look at the rules and go, well, within the, I might go, within the rules, can I do this? But if I can't, 
Well, then I'm rewriting the rules to do what I want to do. And if I'm in a game like D&D, for example, the rules couldn't do half of what I wanted to do. So bye-bye D&D. Let's try Arrow Flight. Nope. All right. Let's try Savage Worlds Fantasy. Nope. Let's try Palladium Fantasy. Nope. Oh, here we are. Basic role-playing. I can do everything I want with some little bit of just... There we go. Look at that. It works. Brilliant. Mazel tov. So I will change the rules to fit the setting. And that will always be the way I will go. And I will always lean that way. Because for me, like you, as a dirty, filthy story gamer, <laughs> setting trumps rules. Did I answer your question? Yeah, I don't I don't find myself to be a dirty story guy. I'm a Hickman manifesto guy. <laughs> I'm in the middle. <laughs> I'm always still in the middle. Dirty, still dirty, filthy story gaming. No, dirty campaigner. That's what we were you're called. Dirty right? campaigner, yeah. That's right. You're a dirty campaigner. I'm a dirty, filthy story <laughs> gamer. Um, so have you collaborated with players on your homebrew content? And how did that process work if you did? Or what, what, what were problems if it didn't? When I first started creating the West... I was working on my, my list of gods, and my friend John was playing, and he always played fighters, because that was what he wanted to play. And he saw the goddess Kalen, and her whole thing was the Kalenites were um, seekers of knowledge. They were always doing stuff. So he and I started talking, and eventually we removed her as a goddess, and we just made her a historical figure that had sponsored and created this idea of the Kalenites. And then we worked out the rules of the Kalenites and how their society works and what they do and how they behave. So through that player, a very important part of my setting came into existence from him going, ooh, can I play someone who serves this god? And then us talking about it. And as a result, it grew out of that. So I, absolutely, absolutely that's happened. Victor Gorchev is here. Run for the hills. And, and yes, he is. Uh, here, I'll put this up. Uh, he is he's representing attorneys at Raw very well. Yeah, so talking about that crap, we're on the Sorry. opposite of that. We're in the homebrew side, so deal with it. Uh, how do you approach homebrewing content for your tabletop RPG? Well, homebrewing homebrewing in RAW is fine, right? Because uh, like what Bear said, if you come up with a setting, right? And just like we said all the way in, uh, back at the beginning is, you know, does, does RAW stifle creativity? No, it doesn't, right? So... I'm a little opposite of what Bear is, is that if I have a setting and I know I want to play X game, I'm going to fit that setting into X game. But you can come up with some really, really gonzo shit when you do that. Okay? The perfect example is the Bro SR and the Muppets of Trollopolis. They're playing, I know, they're playing AD&D, but the races of Trollopolis are Muppets. And then you have the Swalserers that are being led by Macho Mandoff. How do I Macho. kick you off the stream? Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> you, this is, but, this is, I would just fucking leave. Why don't you game. say you're playing 5e with 1e rules? Got it. Okay. But, but see, but, but what I'm saying is I'm saying that, that, um, you, you just you have this you can do really creative things within the rules and so the home homebrew is almost separate of raw because even in if you look in the back of like the 1e dmg as an example right they they actually have like you know your appendix a and b and c that allow you to create homebrew stuff within the world monsters and all of this right or a great example is savage worlds or got gurps you know or any of those right is is your uh, fudge you're handed a rule set and you're said here create right uh as Bear said, you know, I picked up the uh, I picked up the the BRP, which is basically the like, it's not even a rule set. It's basically it's a manual on how to make your rule set, right? <laughs> and it's it's guidelines on how to make your BRP rule set, which is insane. And so from there, right? I mean, you're still playing raw with your homebrew, because again. The Muppets of Trollopolis and the Swolcerers led by Macho Mandoff of Machador. I'm gonna get like real uh, like this will be 
this will probably be. I, I'm going to save this. I'm going to save this for for segment four because it, it gets really gonzo, and I'm going to get kicked off the show. But yeah. Oh, I stopped listening. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. But no. But but again, it's you know all of that stuff is homebrew, right? It's homebrew, but they're still playing. They're still playing one 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 to one time. They're still playing patrons. The other thing is like is is how do you approach homebrew content is you if you're playing with your table for long enough right and you're like man i really got like you, you you know what max i really don't know what to do with this npc can you just just take the day write something up for this npc and uh, present it to me you know over the week and then all of a sudden i now have this npc that has its own faction and everything like that but but one of my other players created it right uh lord mattius uh, here's a castle i don't know what to do with it so just can you fill in the details right home brewing in that sense allows your players to world build with you while you're still running the world right but of course the dm always gets final say Right. Yeah, uh, so I, I was in a guy's game as a post-apocalyptic uh, AD&D second edition. That's where it started. We ended up converting it over to third edition, but uh, it was his world, basically Forgotten Realms, a thousand years of the future, yada, yada. But he had his own races in there, and one of them he didn't have fleshed out. He didn't tell me that. Uh, he gave me the general overview, and I picked it. It was my gaming of that race that actually ended up finalizing the race for him because of how I played it. And so... That I mean, his homebrew world got fleshed out by that. So yeah, I agree that uh, players can do the uh, can absolutely add a lot to the setting. So how do you test and refine homebrew content to sure it integrates smoothly with the existing rules? That's I mean that's tough. You know, uh, so you just you have to just keep like like you. I want to make a um, I. I made, I took the Displacer Beast, um, for example, and I made a cave version of the Displacer Beast, where in, he was, it was a, uh, it was a blind, it was a blind cat essentially, with that had like the big old teeth and like it atrophied eyes, almost like those those deep deep sea fish, right? But okay. rather than being, but but rather than having. Um, the the tentacles that help it to you know shift and phase it there was bioluminescence on the end of the tentacles and so that once the oh well, would you look at that light over there once the party would get within these within these tentacles right all of a sudden this huge like almost stark white um cat of a displacer beast was there so you know and like like Bear said, right? Homebrew is one of those things where you just have to get it to the table and you just have to keep hammering at it and you'll dial it back or you'll ramp it up depending on how the players feel about what you're presenting. Yeah, if you've ever known something or heard something, seen something that's so obvious that you don't know how you didn't think about it before, I, I just, because of what you said right there, I never considered a homebrewing, but I homebrew like every creature I put in the Dungeons and Dragons. Right. I just yeah. never considered it homebrewing. And, and that but it is. But right? it is. Coming yeah, absolutely. Up, yep. You know, coming up, come, if, if, when, when you come up with a magic item or an ego sword that you throw into the world, that is, that's your own homebrew, right? So yeah, I, some, I, I, I don't focus well on the little stuff like that, but yeah. yeah. But sometimes, you know, sometimes you make a magic item, right? That's just way too powerful of a magic item, right? So and then you take uh, it from the player yeah. and he cries, but you know. <laughs> right, exactly. Because <laughs> because he left it on the cart, but the person he hired to uh, to watch the cart just went off. Now, what I like to do out. is I like to add in wild magic all of a sudden. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> make it dangerous for you to use. All right. Um, anything you guys want to bounce back and forth off each other in this before I go into Super Chats? So Bear had probably one of the most, or it, in, in my opinion, it was really, and it, it spawned an entire story or backstory that I wrote because of uh, Bear added, uh, he homebrewed this other civilization into Hyboria that was just at the top of the Villette Sea. Oh, yeah. And 
Yeah. And I mean, that right there, it fit into Hyboria almost perfectly. And then because of the location it was at and everything like that, and then you, it, it inspired me to write the backstory for that character I sent you. So homebrew sometimes, you know, it inspires other creativity. Have I ever shown you my uh, amalgamated fantasy map? No. I won't do it now, but I'll send it to you on Discord. I basically found okay. on I found on um, uh, DeviantArt a blank Greyhawk map. So mm. I took it, I flipped it, and then I went through all the only RPG settings that I love and took all the cultures I wanted and spaced them out around the the, the map. It makes Greyhawk Grognard cry. He hated it. He was Joe. Joe was like, "This is no. this is wrong." And I'm like, "Of course." Well, it's wrong. yeah. Of course. All right. It's well, wrong. let's. We won't dive down that rabbit hole for now. Um, no, it, was, it was a point about homebrew, but that's no, okay. no. I you no, know, I, I I get you, but uh, <laughs> Crafty had something that he wanted to add to that. That no, no, no. I oh, was just okay. it, it was yeah. No, it was it's just one of those things where where I think I think good homebrew spawns other homebrew, yeah. and you I think that you need to sometimes let your players homebrew a little bit. Okay. Yeah, but that, that goes to my point earlier about, you know, I like it when I'm reacting to my players. Like, that whole lizard man thing was nowhere planned. I had no idea. I mean, like, I just had this, you know, very uh, black and white, well, kind of gray world where all, you know, alliance shifted and all this other stuff. And then now all of a sudden I got lizard men who want to become, uh, you know, want to worship the Arn God and and find civilization because of this one event that happened in my game, and I, it's it's cool, it's cool, you know. Um, now that that wasn't like a bro SR type thing though. That was just the players playing, you know, in the sandbox, and it just sort of happened. And like I said, part part of it was what happened in game, and then part of it was after game. We're sitting there having a few drinks, and we're just like, yeah, that would be kind of cool, wouldn't it? Like, yeah, all right, it's canon. It's officially canon in my world, Congrats, right, guys. Yeah. So there was a story of um, me and this other guy. We're, we were playing um, a side session with the DM. My character had a backstory uh, of that he was a knight errant, and his fam and he, he was harboring a fam a dark family seeker because we rolled on a backstory table. But I never fleshed that out, right? So we're going through this tomb, and all of a sudden we meet up with this death knight, and I like. Um, the other player goes, what's a death knight doing here? And I look at the death knight and I sit there and I say, I say, so I forget the name I called it, but basically brother, what are you doing here? This is not what our parents wanted for you. And I just, and me as a player, just like totally invented this thing. I homebrewed my backstory into, and the DM picked that up and ran with it. And that death knight kept coming back over and over and over again after that. I'm not sure I would consider a plot element a homebrew, but I but I get the point. That's just my my take on it. But. Right now, um, that drives some that drives some people crazy because it's like, what are you doing telling the DM what his world is? Yeah, I would I would have a problem with that if I couldn't work with it. If I could work with it, not not a big deal. Um, but if I, oh no, <laughs> nerds, nerd, no. Oh God! Yeah. Oh, I, I was gonna oh. put that up there, but, but, but here's the. How is he gonna say this now? Um, I, I mean, the worst case scenario would be he would respond back, "What do you mean, brother, savage, or something? You know, something like that." If I didn't want that to happen, my issue is that I'm always looking at the player's angle. How are you going to try to manipulate this to think you're smarter than the game and so forth? But uh, you know, something like well, that absolutely just could you be got cop vision players i do got, i do i don't got, have heathen got, he, look i'm not as bad as heathen me. dog but i do have it's because uh we've had it, it we always make it sound like all our players are bad no our players were good we were watching the bad players next to us going "Ooh, oh and also the high school group was horrible but uh you know that's just high school um but yeah uh and nerds nerd says crafty's 4d confirmed yep 4d <laughs> raw how do you do that that's an oxymoron right there. <laughs> Thank you, 4D. You shut well, up real good. Well, no. <laughs> how, how, how do you do 4D raw? Shove that well, some bitch. So 4D right up, raw, right? So one, one in each hand. And... Okay, we're moving on. Uh, 
So actually, I'm going to go in backward order in this one. So I'm going to start with Bear, like I'm supposed to, but then I'm going to go Lord Mattias and then Crafty, because this question begs to go in that order. And that is, how do you... Inter oh, wait, did I get any Super Chats? Let me make sure I didn't get any Super Chats. I oh, no, hold on. I didn't get a Super Chat, but I have one that I do want to put uh, up here. Uh, Engine Joe says, AD&D &D normally doesn't allow you to change your six stats, except for magical means or aging. Older characters lose strength and con and gain intelligence wisdom. Wish spells are stupid. Do you homebrew training rules? I'll, I'll start with Crafty. Training rules? No, I mean... It I, it depends on the game. Like, honestly, I guess I guess that would be a homebrew, because like in fifth edition, you gain a level and then all of a sudden you just know more spells. That doesn't make sense to me. You need to go find. You either need to find spell books. You need to find somebody who's gonna teach you the spells. You know, it that that just doesn't make sense. So I just got an error on my YouTube chat saying not enough memory to open this page. Nice. I have 128 gigs of memory. I think I have enough memory to open a stupid browser. Um <laughs> so I yeah, I, I mean to that point, I mean, would would taking training rules from another game and putting them in a game, was that homebrew? Well, I, think, or is that... I think what he was focusing on there, and I could be wrong about this, but uh, is can you do some sort of physical training to raise your strength or whatever? Uh, can you? Oh yeah, I mean, sure. Why why wouldn't that be like if you if you? I took mean, there a... are no rules in Dungeons and Dragons for that, unless you read a Librum no. of uh, a Gainful Exercise or whatever else it's called. Right, right. But but yeah, I mean, if you wanted to take your downtime and you wanted to train and everything like that, right, then I think I think the way that I would rule this, right, you have a strength, you have a strength of 18. OK, if you wanted to train to raise your strength, you would roll. You would. Uh, uh, oh, there goes we there. lost one. You would roll a D20. And if you roll a, if you roll above uh, your 18 then you get it right that way it's i'm going to allow you to do it but it's going to be a little bit more difficult okay but yeah, is that home brew try, or is that a okay. house yeah is that a home brew or is that a house rule? personally i'd call that I a might, house rule but yeah i i might i might actually have something here um if we're talking about first edition dd there's actually in the was it unearth arcana i believe the cavalier no, had this well, I'm just saying, if you want a frame of no, reference, that's actually, that's actually raw, <laughs> Crafty. Uh, you can look at the Cavalier and the Paladin. I believe their stats increase, at least their prime requisite, by through like this percentage system as they gained in levels. That might actually be a good way to solve this problem without having to homebrew or too much, if at all, because it would be well within the rule set. Now, I don't, but I mean, every game has got its own thing. I know we keep harping on D and D, and maybe we shouldn't, because uh, it's not fair to Bear and other people who are watching this. Um, you know, to the point of homebrew uh, and training. Like I'm, I'm, I've actually grown to like training rules. They do kind of make sense, though. I'm, I'm not a big stickler on them. You know, if the rules don't have them in the rule set, I'm not going to like impose. Uh, but if they are, I am going to use them, um, and. Uh, so yeah, and then just kind of a more general point about homebrew, you know, before you start like radically changing, uh, make sure that the game system you're using is actually going to do what it is that you're looking for. Like uh, I, I, I get in trouble for saying this, but I don't think fifth edition can do gritty, uh, dark and gritty games. There's just it's just too uh, the players, uh, excuse me, the character classes I think are too uh, high powered. It's yes. cartoonish, yeah. Yes, there are rules in the DMG that allegedly allow you to do it, but I played with them. They don't work. Look, they're, any they're game that allows you three death saves and all a, all a bard has to do from 60 feet away is hum one t one note and you're not going to die anymore. No. Yeah. So so I think that's I, also another consideration. This might be bleeding into section, session uh, four as well. Sorry. I do want to get to the next question. But, <laughs> so, yeah, but I, a, I think, I think starting asking that is there a rule set that does what you're wanting to do might actually be a better thing to start sure. uh, yep. to ask yourself and, and ahead, just a real minor thing because i picked up on it from lord mattias is i think the reason that when everybody when people discuss raw 
they automatically go to D and D because that is where you hear the most discussion about That's raw fair. versus, ver, you know, versus not raw is is oh. in is in the space of D and D. So I had a huge, I think it's subconscious. Yeah, well, I had a huge argument with my in-person gaming crew when we started playing uh, Free Leagues, The Walking Dead, because they meet, they read it, and they're like, you know, the, the resource management here sucks. It's too abstract. And I was like, you know what? I kind of feel you on this, but we're going to play Raw first. We're going to see how this mm -hmm. plays out before right. we try to change it. Quick question. Now, now uh, I, I'm derailing my own conversation now. Is it the same typical Free League stuff where it's like food is the D, D6, D8, D10? No. Oh, no, so, so it's different. It's, okay. it's, it's actually more story gamey. Uh, the, oh, wow. The, okay. the game master comes up with a series of challenges. Some of them are personal, some of them are environmental, yeah. some of them involve factions. And when the game master feels it's appropriate to add dramatic tension, they could say, oh, You're out of food. What do you do? Oh, kind okay. Of yeah, I, that, that's, I, that's too I'm story gamey for my taste. I'm oversimplifying it, I but it, yeah. So, but that it's something along those lines. It's very abstract. It's not a zombie. Uh, survival By the way, world. I love freely games, but I don't get their IP games. I don't have Blade Runner. I don't have Odd World. I don't have uh, yeah. um, Walking Dead, and so forth. So, are we, are we ready to move on? Did that answer everybody's comments and questions? For I, I didn't get to comment on the uh, the question. But go it's ahead. Okay yep. No. Go ahead. I literally have zero opinions on training rules in D and D. Okay. So we're good. Okay, <laughs> I, just wanted, I just wanted to point out that I was I was kind of steamrolled by the other two. Well, well, that's why one. I said, does anybody? <laughs> the other one, not Lord McCombs. Well, Bear, you know, for that, I will start with you now. Well, so, uh, how do you introduce homebrew content to your players? Here, <laughs> yeah. See, that's have why I, I started with him. This clear already. I just say, here it is. Enjoy. <laughs> Yay! How did I so, introduce it to you and Cal Benna, Max? Okay, well, let, let's let's. I, I I understand what you're saying, but let's go outside the world for a second. So, Albana is set. We've got it there. Now, for whatever reason, the the track of the adventure has gone in a direction, or we've done stuff as players where you feel the need, or the desire, or the want, because GM Cody stabbed his eye too many times. <laughs> to to. I know, right? They were, we're gonna, never going to figure that one out. Um, uh, to add, I, I don't know what makes sense, so just go with me here. You add a new demonic magic race in the game because it fits his character now or something like that. Yeah. How would you introduce that like to Cody or, or to us as the party? The events of the story. As you went along, you'd get the first clues. You'd start saying, hey, there's something going on here. We're seeing this demon face in all these places we go what's happening why is there this one piece of graffiti showing up in all the cities and wait the that's actually people? happening are you spoiling it <laughs> near 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 murders that have occurred in these cities what's happening what's going on it's clues my players as a general rule people who have played with me enough know that if i take the time to point something out you might want to pay attention might some don't most do because they realize if I'm taking the time as the GM or as the, the DM or the game master, whatever the hell you want to call it, to say, and you see Blurn, that is valuable. That is important. That means something. If I'm just describing a building, that's a different story. But if I'm pointing out something wonky or weird, pay attention. The problem is that's with people who know you who've played with you or, or have experienced how you run a game. When you're playing a pickup game, well, I would never do anything like that in a pickup game because it's a waste of time. Because pickup games, no one gives a shit. No one invests in a pickup game. They just make a stupid character. They crack their dumb puns. Boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, the role players love puns and move on. So don't waste your time introducing that stuff. You have to do it in a campaign situation. And that's where the dirty, filthy story gaming comes in. You introduce it. You hook. You, you bait the hook. And see if they take it. If they don't take the bait, that's okay. There's more to come. And then eventually they're going to go, hey, this is like the eighth time we've seen the, the green star in the blue circle spray paint near someone dying. Maybe this matters. You know what I mean? It's the way it is. You introduce it through the story. See, I love red herrings. <laughs> yeah, but you also are suspicious of everybody. Uh, yes. 
You actually answered your follow-up, too. You're welcome. So, moving on to Lord Mattias, same question for you. How do you, how do you introduce homebrew content to your players? Well, um, if it's something that's based on setting that I've come up with, I will create a campaign document to kind of introduce, give a basic rundown so they kind of know what they're you know about to get into and whatever special rules that I might be introducing. Like the background thing I did with the Lamentations game. You know, the background's set up that if you're a cleric, you are, there's only one God. It's the one true God of the Iron Faith. And you are one of these, uh, you know, uh, following one of these doctrines, you're an inquisitor, you're a hospitalier, you know, you're a, you know, whatever. Uh, if you're a fighter, you're a soldier, right? And you maybe you're one of these types of soldiers, right? So on and so forth. Um, if you're an elf, you are fey, you are a magic incarnate, you're immortal, and you're either from the summer court, the winter court, uh, the gloaming court, um, you know, that sort of thing. I, I even gave like a half elf background because technically there's no half elves in Lamentations. So you're an elf, but character class, but you have the half elf background, you know, and that just kind of fed enough to the players to kind of know, okay, there's this dark fantasy setting. There's this one religion that's awfully messianic and incredibly uh, aggressive and this, that, and the other thing. And they really hate magic users. And, you know, everything is outlined for them, but I did not give them a 25 page lore dump uh I've said this before <laughs> three three, three that, and a half hours worth of lore that uh that they that make I, the that, players sit through that i recite in shakespearean with the accent and everything no i uh I, well, I maybe if you paid attention the first time i wouldn't have had to give you three and a half hours yeah, worth of uh right uh, I've said this before. The That's 50, for you, Crafty. <laughs> the twenty-five page uh, back, uh, lore, game world lore, is to the players as the five-page backstory is to the game master. No one likes it. Don't f and do it. Just give what is necessary so they have the mechanics that are different, that are new to your world, that make your world different and come alive in a way that's. Because at the end of the day, the mechanics is where the rubber meets the road, right? And that's if the mechanics imitate and simulate the world then i think you got a good mechanic right and that's what you need for world building so if give them what they need give them enough so they can kind of dip their toe in and then let them go and then start dripping in and feeding the information as needed and i'm always like i said with the lizard man example i'm always open to player input too like if they come up with an idea like they start asking questions about something and be like yeah that's 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 great i never thought of that or whatever but as far as like homebrew rule content i i i'm not opposed to a campaign document but i try to keep it short simple this is just what you need let's play this was literally out of the book, Sheriffs. It's because you guys didn't have the book. I just gave you the quick how it came to pass. I didn't give you guys a lot. In fact, I gave the I only gave fighters fighter information. I only gave casters caster information. So um, I, maybe I'm misreading how you're posting this here, but the one to two chapters of history of Earth Dawn was literally just the beginning of the first edition book because you guys didn't own it. That's it. <laughs> um so you were talking about gauge, you know, your players' interests. You've been seeing that kind of throughout the 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 episode so far so how do you gauge your interest or comfort with the new homebrew editions like maybe they thought the uh the uh the lizard man was a neat idea as you're just kind of bouncing around but when you put it in the game they might have been like "Ooh." so how do you how do you gauge that the, no this is something they really like or something they're like eh, okay it was it was a meme it, well we weren't really meaning for this well um with respect to the lizard man i have uh Two, there's actually two characters, his kick, the lizard king himself, and a guy named Snack. Uh, so they're they lack they really like the character. Uh, they think it's like a cool version of the monk. Lamentations okay. doesn't have a monk, but the way the character class develops, they get higher AC, big their claws become bigger, so they do more damage. So it's kind of like a monk class. Um, so they like it. How do so, I, but, but on a general level, what do you do to sport? gauge their interest? Um well, like I said, you just got to keep your ear to the ground and listen to what the players are doing. This same uh, world that I'm running with my Lamentations game, I mean, it's kind of like my default setting. I ran it in 5th edition a uh, few just before COVID, and um, there was some pushback with respect to how I was handling magic. 
Um, I, I took away sorcerers and I took away uh, traditional spellcasters and it was all warlocks because um, that fit the theme. Like clerics have the one true God. The rest of you are worshiping demons. That's the kind of the thing. So like you'd have like these warlocks with their cults who are like, oh, no, this is the nature God that we're revering as they're cutting open, you know. <laughs> It's so whatever. it's so natural to kill other people and sacrifices. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so that was sort, of, but that fed fed, uh, fed the uh, the world that I was trying to present, um, and there was some pushback. Um, so, uh, eventually, I started. Uh, you know, we had to sit down. I'm like, okay, you guys really don't like this, and they're like, yeah, we'd like to actually have more than two spell slots. This, that, and the other thing. Um, so, you know, we I worked with them on that because, at the again, at the end of the day, number one, these are my friends. We we play all the time. We've been gaming together for decades, so I'm not going to put my fists down and start acting like a child because they don't like my idea. But number two, I want to make sure I have a game. So, you know, I'm more than happy to work with them. But that happened. That, i got to be honest with you. That was like the only time I really have had pushback. And I, and I think it was more because I didn't really see some of the ramifications ramifications uh of something like 5e taking some of this stuff out and kind of pigeonholing certain other things um so that goes back to something i've said earlier this is something i learned through my own mistakes you really got to understand the syntax of how all the rules are before you start messing with them well the good um, news is you just answered two, fo two follow-up questions in one so good job <laughs> so so crafty i know which one i'm asking crafty now all right, Crafty. Well, how do well, you introduce? Of, l l l just for the folks out there who might have forgot what it is, uh, how do you introduce homebrew content to your players? Uh, with a three and a half hour phone call. Oh, so uh, yeah. Are you, and do I have to be in character in the phone? No, but it's important. It's on you to pay attention to what is said when you're joining a new GM. Information being shared about the game will clearly be important. It's common sense. Just get it to just get that through your head. The I'm fact sorry. That I'm you sorry. Just, what, what were you saying? Just the fact that you just told <laughs> me that you remember most of what I said during my three and a half hour call. I figure you were just saying that you missed some of what I said or let it go in one ear or out the other. Though your attitude is a major red flag to me right now. Max. Well, let me give you another red flag no. since he's not here. <laughs> I have read, Bear, I've watched Bear's Codex Albana videos, and I've yeah. read his uh, his treatises that he has on that. At this point, I don't remember any of them. I have to go back. Yay! And Which is fine, right? So that so that that's that's really the thing. Okay, if you're gonna if you're gonna homebrew something, right? Honestly, I would say that ninety percent of lore homebrew is more for the game master than it is for the players right it's a it's an exercise in creativity if the if the players catch on to it and they want to dive deeper then that's that's awesome that's what that that's what that homebrew is for right but like what lord Mattias is saying like dumping a 20 page like lord doc on them or a 20 page um you know campaign primer on them is not the way to run the game right you, what what you have to do is, is is you have to hold on hold on you yeah. have to pre you have to present to them what is what they're going to play at the moment Right now, if you do dump a 20 page um, lore document on them or a Make campaign sure primer or everything like that, right, then then you have to then you have to realize that some players are not going to be as invested in it as you are. And you have to you, what you have to do is is with that homebrew, you can't just say here. It is now on you to understand this. You have to keep bringing it and, up. And that's and what Bear does well. Why I haven't been like, right. oh my God, I got to reread, I got to reread, got to reread, because Bear's world does that very well. But there are some nuances that I know I have to go back and, and re pick up on, especially since we had like a three month break from playing. Right. <laughs> so if you are going to have that 20 page lore dump, right, just, I don't know, just don't expect. Don't expect that the players are going to memorize. No, as a game 100%. master, you need to reinforce yeah. it yourself, like through right. the game. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. I heard it through a little birdie. <laughs> Stop it. Don't make me laugh. Um, <laughs> so, 
what advice do you have? No, no, I'm asking that to all of you later. Where was yours? Oh, nope, that wasn't it. Oh, yeah, yeah. How do you handle situations where a player may exploit or understand or misunderstand the homebrew rules? Because I know you're the raw person. I want to mix it up so you you got a homebrew rule now. Mm -hmm. And when the player just doesn't quite understand how this fits in or takes it in a way that wasn't intended. We just have a discussion about it. I mean, it's so I, it's really that simple. Hey, I don't think you quite understood what I what I homebrewed here, right? I may sit there and say, "How did you?" I may ask, "How did you come up with that interpretation?" And then I may go back and rewrite my homebrew rule to be a little bit more clear on what my intention was, right? So, but again, that goes, you know, raw versus intention, sure. right? Yep. But, right. I, it, but it, it's my opinion. It is my opinion that when, when a, when a game, when somebody writes a book, right, there is an intention how that book is, is to be played, right? And that's raw rules is written, right? The, how they wrote the book is their intention, right? But because we don't have access to the creator, we never know their intention. In homebrew, you have access to the creator, so you know their intention. Okay. Um, I got a funny follow-up to that, but I'm not going to ask it. This, so before we open it up to the back and forth, I'm going to ask this. This is questions for all of you. And then any follow-ups you want to ask as well, go ahead and add those in there. What advice do you have for GMs who are new to homebrewing and want to start creating their own content for whatever published setting or system is out there? All right, Crafty, you, you raise like. your finger first. St steal, steal what you like. That's the e that's that's the easiest way to get into homebrewing is steal what you like. Ad adapt a story, a movie, television show, a book. Steal what you like. I have Can a big pile of ideas you got for movies, books, comics, other games, etc. in the corner and go, behold, my homebrew. I'm not even remotely joking. No, no, no I know you're not joking, yeah, but, 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 but part that I it, thought was funny. You know, you, yeah. Go right. Ahead. Is is if you oh if, if how do you say too much? You know, some people throw in way too much. I wouldn't know about that. <laughs> You've never, Everybody, never been around and somebody's that's, done that's, that? That's, that's, that's the rookie numbers. you got to pump those numbers up 20 pages, please. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, no, but just file the serial numbers off and be yeah. as creative as you want to be. If you're doing a sci-fi game and you want to bring in the Romulans, but you don't want to call them the Romulans, you can be as cheap as calling them the Bobulans and go from there. Or you can call them the, the Space Elves corporals or whatever the hell you want to do. Just have fun with it. And don't worry. My advice is homebrew your little heart. Let your freak flag fly. Bring in the stuff you want. I literally introduced Klingons into Star Wars one time. Whole cloth Klingons. And no one blinked. They didn't care. Oh. It was a cool moment and it moved on. You know? Yeah, but then when you have Muppets and Trollopulous, you're just like, oh. I'm going to beat you to death with a Muppet, I swear <laughs> to God. And I, and, I, and I know Sean, so I'll get Mage's musings and I'll punch you with it. <laughs> Lord Mattias, uh, you look like you got something to say? Yeah, I I, I think I, I'm going to go back to, because I think you learn a lot from failure. So that 5e game I discussed a moment mm -hmm. ago, that's when I tried to implement like this dark world fantasy world idea that I had. And I learned a lot of things about fifth edition and I learned a lot of things about this world that my homebrew. And I think the number one question you should ask yourself is the system you're going to work with right for the genre tone and the experience you want to have before you even go, because you might not even need to. When I found Lamentations for the first time, which was shortly after that game, my my game, my five E game was starting to fizzle out, and then COVID hit. I was like, "Where have you been all my life?" I read Lamentations cover to cover in one night. And I'm like, "Where have you been all my? This is this is it. This is what I needed. Had I had this, I would have had, I think, a much success, a more successful campaign back back then." Um, so, would yeah. you agree with this? Because this is, I fully believe what I'm about to say. <clears throat> System matters. I am I one of those people that won't just sit at a table just because they're my friends playing any old system. I'll definitely try new stuff. Absolutely. If I haven't played it before, but if you say, dude, I got this great, it's probably three to five year Pathfinder game. I'm going to be like, have fun with that guys. Uh, let me know when the game's over. I'll hang out afterward. But cause system does matter to me. It also sets a tone. It sets so many different aspects of the setting and so forth. 
Yeah, I agree with you on that. I might. I'm, I don't know if I'm as hard line it uh, as as. Uh, I just know I don't line. like it so much. It's not even about the name. I just oh, no, don't no, 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 like no. that D20 you, mechanic you, so you, much you, that I'm like. You misunderstand. Yeah. You misunderstand what I'm saying. Like, if my friends came up to me and said, "Dude, we know you don't like Five E, but we we know you're a little burned out, or you want to take a break or something, and so and so wants to run Curse of Strahd." You know, they're my friends. I'm not going to say no. You know what I mean? I'm like, okay. <laughs> Maybe I just have bad friends because all of my friends are like, if they don't want it, if they don't like a system, they're like, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, well, I don't know. Maybe you have more friends than I do, but I mean, it's just like the five of us, you know, or six of us, you know? So it's like, and we want to play, we want to game together. And like I said, I think I might've said this on another stream. Uh, you know, we get together once a month, so it's more than just a game. It's our fellowship. It's us getting okay. together and, you know, catching up on each other's lives. So I'm not going to say no to a fight. I'm going to fight vigorously to avoid it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, uh, but no, I do think system matters and it's more than just what like interests me. Like I really want to play forbidden lands. I haven't had a chance. I mean, I, I played in like a one shot once and I was like, this is awesome. Really want to run forbidden lands. It's dark fantasy. My friends are kind of into it, kind of not. Um, but they're kind of intrigued because it's a different system and it'll be kind of a new thing for them to learn. Do uh, they hate but, death spirals? Uh, Forbidden lands is, oh, uh, I know. especially at low level is, or not level, but you oh, know, Oh, I know that's why I like it. It's very challenging. Yeah, me too. Uh, but, uh, but like at the same time though, I'm, I'm not going to take forbidden lands and try to turn it into like, a 5e romp through strict saving because it's just the wrong system for right it, okay you know? and that's that's my point about homebrew like make sure the system is kind of doing what you're looking for if you want to create i don't know uh swashbuckling adventure and you're like i really like lamentations of the flame princess i'm gonna be like you got the wrong system to do this homebrew i i really i mean maybe you're a genius but i don't think it's going to work Try something else, you know. I mean, Try there are people out there who any game can play in any system. I disbelieve. I mean, I believe it. On I don't very, agree with that. Very well, high level, but not when you dig into the weeds. Go ahead, Bear. So, oh boy, uh, system matters. Absolutely, system matters. Uh, but also, player attitude matters a lot. So, for example, if we scroll back in the chat a little bit, you'll see Mister Mister Max says. If you give me a 20 pages document, Lord Dump, I'll excuse myself and not join your game. Okay. Well, it's your choice to make. But I also have a player in my heroic and a couple of other games who literally said to me, if you write it, I'll read it. No. Oh. Because they're showing respect to the yep. GM. Players need to break this attitude that reading is a fucking chore. I will never mm -hmm. understand this concept that reading is a fucking chore. Like, Jesus Christ, you'll read whatever game bullshit book you're a fan of, but you won't read the stuff the guy who's running a game took the time to put together for This you. goes back to playing is an investment. Yep. It is uh, crafty, again, with the whole uh, it's an intramural sport. sport. Yeah, but that's the thing, right? So system matters, and players can have an opinion on system. I have a friend of mine. He will not play certain systems. He's like, oh, you're running that game. I'm not interested. Yeah. And I, and I respect him on that. I may go to him like Mateus is saying, hey, dude, look, I know you're not into the system, but I got this really great campaign, and I can really see you having some fun with it, and try and give him the old pitch. And he says no, he says no. But if I hand you the campaign setting and go, here's the world your characters are going to be in, you might want to just give this a read if you can, but at least mm -hmm. reference it when stuff comes up so you'll know what's going on. And they go, I'm not playing in your game, and leave. Hi. Well, guess, guess who's never getting invited back to one of my games again? <laughs> Someone who has that little respect for me as a GM and a narrator, putting way more work into games than the players ever will, putting way more time between sessions into prepping things and getting things ready for games. There has to be, yep. you know, there has I to be that. that point. There has to be. That. And if you don't want to play like that, that's fine, but you'll never get invited back to one of my games for doing it. I'll just be like, okay, clearly you're not someone who's ever going to be someone that's going to be fun to play with. And that's okay. Everyone needs to set their boundaries. But understand that choices have consequences, ramifications, cause and effect, and it will happen. 
All right. Then, do you we guys have any fun. crosstalk with each other that you wanted to get out? Because I'm ready to move into the next segment after reading some super chats here, which will be balancing all it all together. So we talked about rules as written. We talked about uh, house rules. We talked about homebrew. We're going to finish this up by wrapping it all together with a nice big bow or more confusion. Who knows? Crafty is frozen. Crafty no. is frozen. No, you are frozen. You've been in that same position on the screen for a while. Oh, that's just how I'm sitting. No, no. Your mouth your isn't moving as you're talking. Your image is frozen. Oh, it's not. Uh, mm. Well, I don't know how to fix that. You can you can drop out and come back in to see if that fixes it. Usually does. Now that he's gone, let's talk shit about him. <laughs> no, let's want to get to the last segment here so that uh, we can go into segment five. I am crazy tired. I will, I will <laughs> say real quick. I agree with you, Bear. The Game Master does do like a vast majority of the work, and that's why I cannot stand it when people say, you're just a referee. It's like, yeah. no, I am a lot more than that, motherfucker. <laughs> so I do so agree I, with you, and I, I think there should be some respect. Basic expert and <laughs> to get these different opposing viewpoints. Oh, did Crafty like lose the internet? We just said drop out, man. We didn't say like... <laughs> Restart your computer. Yeah, right. uh, oh, there he is. And he's back. Where he belongs, the bottom of the panel. Uh, we'll put it back oh. into the same order here. Okay. Okay, let's uh, let's hit some of the uh, chat that starred and super chats that we got in here. By the way, I didn't answer Engine Joe's question, so here's what I'm going to say. This might surprise people because of how I've been talking today, but I'm actually pretty raw about this. I'm one of those people that I don't think it's dumb because I know why people want to do it, and I've wanted to do it as well. But attributes are attributes, and to me, they're locked in once you do them. Unless the game actually has it built into the game of raising them, I don't mind that my character will forever in Dungeons & Dragons have an 8 strength unless I get a Librem of Gainful Exercise, or whatever the hell it's called. It just doesn't bother me. So I keep it... Honestly, I'm raw on this one. Whatever the rules say, and then if you get the magic item, I'll make sure that if you're really dead set on like, oh, it's just neat. I'll, I'll make it worth, you know, you'll have to work for it because everything to me is risk reward. I'll probably add that in, but it's not just going to be like, I want to do a bunch of push-ups every day of my life. Can I get plus one strength? No. No, you can't. That's that's how I handle that. So, uh, Bear the Gen X GM says, uh, the lack of super chats is a plot to prevent me from winning the prize tonight. I'm onto your sneaky plot chat. <laughs> So there you go. We are actually at, surprising, we are at a total of $65. 20 from um, uh, Rumble and then 45 from, uh, my God, YouTube. But it doesn't, it just doesn't seem like it, that's for sure. But we, I mean, it still means we're $35 short. So, you know. Uh, law the, dog when you need him. Where is Law Dog when yeah, you need him? Yeah, where is Law Dog tonight? That's true. Steve, I, I'm thinking of, you know, his comments, not his money. Of course, he makes me drink. So maybe it's good he's not here. Uh, Beat Megan for ten dollars. What's that? That was a while ago. Uh, Crafty, oh. gotta keep an eye on the chat too. Uh, I'm running riffs and cannot listen until the replay. But good show, probably. I had to LOL at that. That was funny. Was good show, probably. probably. Well, probably. guess what? You'll be able to watch it a month later. You're gonna have to wait a month for it now. <laughs> Don't die. Don't die. And to. Bear the Gen X GM became a new member also. Bear's doing everything no, to try to win tonight. To my membership, finally. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I'm, I'm working more now, so I'm making more money. That's, That's good. Hey, and just for the folks out there that, that are on, then we're going to move into the next uh, segment. Uh, look, I am a member of literally zero channels across all platforms. So I, I understand if somebody doesn't have the money or doesn't want to be a member, I get it. Of course, we try to provide a little bit more for the members if the, if you're into that kind of thing, you know, members only live streams and so forth, but I get it. And I pre seriously, I sincerely appreciate every single person who super chats and is a member as uh, yeah. I mean, sometimes it gets rough to do all this nonsense with the amount of work we put in behind the scenes, but uh, you know, the, the little couple of ducats that you guys give us really do help really do. So with that said, I just want to remind folks. Oh, I already kind of said this. Where's my little button? Boop, there it is. Uh, just a reminder, some random RPG live stream airs live on Fridays at 6 p.m. Central Time, except for the last Friday of the month. Once this live stream ends, the full live stream will remain available to YouTube members only. See, there you go. Bear can now watch this after the fact. 
while these four discussion segments will post to the public a month later. So if you enjoy this discussion, please like this video, subscribe to all of the panelists' channels, and if anybody has any last-minute links you guys want to put in the private chat that I can add, I will do that, uh, which you can find in the description. Crafty, like, for example, your I don't have your Twitter. Oh. So if you want to put that uh, in there. And yeah. I can add that to the description. But please be sure to uh, like, subscribe, and share to all of these fine folks.